In February 1957, Alicia and John Nash were married in a small private ceremony in Washington, D.C. John is marrying somebody who was intelligent and that he cared for and she, cared, she obviously cared for him. Everything was great. Since arriving at MIT, Nash had solved a series of imposing problems in mathematics, ranging from algebraic geometry to partial differential equations. Unlike his work in game theory, these groundbreaking proofs dazzled the mathematical world. We would all be climbing the mountain, the mountain being mathematical perfection. He had a different approach. We came up this way, and he came this way. In July 1958, Fortune magazine featured him as one of the brightest stars in mathematics. He had just turned 30. For a mathematician, turning 30 is a lot like for a ballet dancer or an athlete. Age is your enemy. By his own standards, Nash had fallen short. For a decade, he had pursued the Fields Medal, mathematics' highest honor. That year, he failed to win it again. He was an intensely ambitious person. He was extremely competitive, and he was very bitter that uh, uh, he, he, he didn't get it. At the time, I'd, I had some recognition, I was making some progress professionally, but I wasn't really at the top. I didn't have top-level recognition. He threw himself into solving the Riemann hypothesis, the holy grail of mathematics. The work was mentally and physically exhausting, and ultimately proved futile. He began to worry that his best years were behind him. At the same time, he learned that Alicia was pregnant. A psychotic break is usually precipitated by some stressful experiences. Often these stressful experiences involve a demand that the person who, who becomes psychotic take on greater responsibility. Below his brash and confident surface, John Nash now hid another side of himself. One filled with anxiety, self-doubt, even fear. It would mark the beginning of a strange and tragic metamorphosis. On New Year's Eve, 1958, the Nashes attended a costume party at the home of a colleague. John went dressed as a baby. He wore a diaper and spent much of the night curled up in Alicia's lap. Even to those used to his eccentricities, it was a disturbing scene. A few weeks later, Nash rushed into the common room at MIT and claimed that powers from outer space were sending him coded messages in the New York Times. Another incident soon followed. He interrupted a lecture to announce that he was on the cover of Life magazine, disguised as Pope John XXIII. He knew this, he said, because 23 was his favorite prime number. Then he began noticing a curious pattern on the MIT campus. Men wearing red ties. He was sure they were members of a secret communist organization. When the University of Chicago offered him a prestigious position, Nash turned it down. He was already scheduled, he said, to become emperor of Antarctica. John talked about the people from outer space who were destroying his career. And 
the international organizations that were attacking him. Somebody you've known for a long time to, to hear this kind of news is uh, very unsettling. Really, his personality seemed to change in a period of a week or so. It was very fast. I mean, you're seeing a mind disintegrate in front of you. I felt uh, shocked. The math department chairman thought Nash was having a nervous breakdown and relieved him of his teaching duties in February. Still, Nash continued to unravel. One night, he painted black spots all over the bedroom wall. Alicia tried to handle it herself, but at a certain point, it overwhelmed her. And when she turned to a psychiatrist, she was ultimately advised that he should be hospitalized. He was this genius. And you were going to clap him into a hospital where God knows what might happen? I think it was very tough. I didn't feel that I belonged locked up. I, I never went voluntarily. Nash was taken to McLean Hospital a private psychiatric facility outside Boston known for treating the wealthy and famous. He was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and given an injection of Thorazine to calm him down. His treatment consisted of psychoanalysis. The staff called him Professor. In those days, many doctors thought schizophrenia was related to problems in childhood, problems in mothering. They didn't know it was a real brain disease and that people are born with a vulnerability to that brain disorder. Conventionally, we define it as a severe mental illness characterized by hallucinations, delusions, or peculiar forms of thinking. For example, a schizophrenic may feel that when he looks at you, he may believe that it's not himself who's looking at his own eyes. Some, somehow, someone else is actually having his experiences. A delusional state of mind is like living a dream. When I knew where I was, I was there in observation. But I was able to think that I was like a victim of a conspiracy. The delusions have often a cosmic quality, a feeling of ominousness. Everything that happens around you takes on a, a tremendous significance. In Manus, I saw myself as some sort of a messenger having a special function. Like the Muslim concept with Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. Someone who visited him in the hospital asked him, how could you, a mathematician, someone who's committed to rationality, how could you believe that aliens from outer space were communicating with you? Nash's response was, these ideas came to me the same way my mathematical ideas did, so I believe them. Virginia visited John at McLean, but could hardly bear to see her son in such a state. I broke her, I guess. It was devastating. You can imagine that every day she would wake up and every she would go to bed and she would have this on her. Alicia urged his colleagues to visit, hoping their support would help John get back on his feet. All the mathematicians were very upset because this was a great genius that was lost. He said, Newman, they are not going to let me out until I'm normal. But 
That'll never be. I never was. I began to realize I would not be getting out of the hospital unless I uh, uh, conformed and behaved normally. So I, in part I would do that as if I would be sweeping the delusions under a rug and they were able to come out later on. It could be triggered and I would move very quickly to accepting it again. Nash retained a lawyer who secured his release after 50 days of hospitalization. Within weeks, he resigned from MIT, withdrew all the money from his pension fund, and announced he was leaving for Europe. Alicia, who had given birth while John was in McLean, felt she had no choice but to go with him. They left behind their newborn son with Alicia's mother. In July 1959, the Nashes arrived in Paris to find the city in turmoil. The streets reverberated with strikes, explosions, and mass demonstrations against the nuclear arms race. A week later, Nash suddenly took off on his own. He went to Luxembourg and announced he wanted to give up his American citizenship. He was turned away. I got to Geneva and I thought of a way of being a refugee. They had a slogan, City of Refuge. I envisioned a hidden world where the, the communists and the anti-communists were really the same. They were sort of schemers. And I had the idea that some of the people like Eisenhower and the Pope and the powers that be might be unsympathetic to me. These thoughts on the surface are not rational, but there could be a situation where there were things were not what they might seem. If to be mad is to be in error, there's a kind of contradiction there, isn't there, between what it is to be mad in the eyes of the world and what it is to have these experiences in which you're having a sense of revelation and you're noticing features of the world that other people seem to be too stupid or too blind to recognize. Most of the time when he was trying to give up his citizenship, he was being followed around by the naval attaché who had his commission to get his passport back and give it to Alicia. And so he chased him around Europe. I went to the American uh, embassy in Paris and I asked for help. I said, I don't know what to do, you know, but I don't want him to get into trouble. Nash wandered Europe for nine months before embassy officials arranged to have him deported. French police seized him and took him to the airport. Nash later claimed that he was sent back on a ship in chains like a slave. The Nashes moved to Princeton. To support her family, Alicia took a job with a research division of RCA. She hoped that with the help of the math community, they could start over again. When John moved back to Princeton, we offered him work with no real heavy responsibilities just to get him back into the society. And those efforts foundered when he refused to sign W-4 forms. He just was... He, he was paranoid schizophrenic. He, he w wouldn't sign a document for the government because he still thought there was a conspiracy there, out there against him. Nash was still in the grips of his illness. He became obsessed with unrest in the Middle East and made countless phone calls to friends and family using fictitious names. He would call me. Would you accept a call from some strange name? 